Welcome back to a very special Let's Play episode today. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're going to be doing a little, something a little different, uh, which is we're going to be playing a relatively modern game called Tribes of Midgard, and this is a long play Let's Play like we normally do, but I'm going to show you guys how to do a triple boss kill um, in this game, and that is kind of a tricky thing, so there might be some Tribes of Midgard people watching this that... Uh, have found me who aren't normally on my channel if so welcome if not you know it is what it is uh but uh i've actually gotten really into this game recently and played it a lot and uh i find it very satisfying to do the triple uh boss kill on it so uh we're gonna do it and for those of you who don't know tribes of midgard is sort of a pick up and play game you each session lasts about an hour to two hours or so if you're doing the saga mode and you guys will see it's sort of a roguelike tower defense style game it's very interesting very unique um but uh let's see here if we go into the challenges i just want to show you what, what, what we're going to be working for today which is the triple kill the ancient triple kill um and it's pretty straightforward how to do um for those of you who do know this game um your starter kits are quite important uh, a lot of people go with the feral starter kit which i was using for a long time but i've shifted away from these days uh the dual weaver starter kit i think personally for my play style is preferred um but you probably want to use one of these if you're not using one of these you want to use the villager starter kit basically all these kits just start you off a little ahead of the game and you guys will see see my <laughs> my nude viking to the right there um, the gist of it is these things, this feral starter kit, and this one start you with a weapon, which allows you to immediately start doing stuff. Uh, whereas this starts you with abilities that are as good as a weapon. Um, and I will say the reason I stopped using the feral starter kit is that the uh, fire boss, the third boss that uh, was recently added, you need some fire-based armor in order to beat that guy, and uh, truthfully, it's just easier to pick a class that can use armor, and if you're going to use armor, then the uh, starting rune there that gives you bonus damage is not going to be effective so uh, the dual weaver one is more effective into the late game anyway so let's hop into saga and uh actually i'm going to abandon this world here or actually before i abandon it um so i was playing this earlier and this is a world where i don't know it's fine um not too much was going on but actually i'll be able to talk a little bit about uh this game without any time pressure if i just use this world for a second to demo but basically what you're trying to do to get the triple boss kill is uh a couple of things so this is tribes of midgard for those of you who just like to tune in for my long plays and not a tutorial don't worry we're gonna get to the long play you'll see lots of gaming action um but here's basically what you want to do um in the game you want to get up a quarry i got one over here you want to try and get this up on day one, two, or three. And the way you get a quarry up fast is these bridges that are all over the place. Once we start playing, you'll see what I mean. But a lot of the bridges are barricaded, and you break down about three or four barricades, and you get enough materials to uh, build this quarry. You put the quarry up first because you need the quarry materials to unlock the bridge, which I guess I haven't found on this map yet. Oh, it's right over here. You can just sort of see the hint of it. Um, the bridge is what's going to lead you to your first uh, boss. Um, and it is Fenrir. And it is this giant wolf dog. I like to kill him first because he gives you a rune. That means that none of your weapons or armor lose durability as you play. And as you'll see, your weapons and armor get worn down and you have to keep coming back to town to repair them. It is a big pain in the butt. Um, if you kill uh, Fenrir first, you get the rune where you don't have to repair anymore. It speeds up your other two bosses immensely. Um, the other few things that I will mention is I'm playing as a Sentinel, which is my uh, favorite class. A lot of people play as Seer, and the Seer class basically you don't have to worry as much about heat and cold. As you'll see, heat and cold don't matter so much. I used to play as Seer, I did what everyone else did, but then I realized Sentinels can throw their shield and stun enemies, Captain America style, and it is actually really fast to clear out the hideout and everything else you need to do. So Sentinels, I personally, in my playstyle, I find her better. 
Uh, this purple axe that I got, you'll see this is a good weapon. This You can pretty much play until late game. Once you have this axe, you don't really need anything else. You can get other weapons, but they're not necessary. Um, so you can get this axe really early in the game by farming in the swamp. And trying to think of anything else basic to tell you guys at this point. Um, it's pretty much just get the bridges, get the materials, open the quarry, start to do some basic quests and stuff as we will do together. Um, and once you got all that stuff kind of rolling, the game kind of plays itself. You'll kill Fenrir in, uh, you know, within day five or six sometimes. Uh, sometimes a little se seven or eight if you're a little late, but it doesn't really matter. You still have plenty of time to get the other bosses. Um, because the, the ocean boss is really quick to get. Seems like a pain in the butt, but it's actually really easy to get. And then, uh, the, by the time, I like to leave the fire guy till the end. Because one thing about this game is there's temperature effects and the world slowly freezes. And if you go to the fire guy on the early days, he, um, his world will be on fire and you will lose health because the world is too hot and you'll need like uh, special armor or potions to deal with the heat. Just wait till later in the game. Wait till day 10, 11, even 12. It doesn't really matter. The world will have cooled down so much that you can go there with very little heat armor and you'll be just fine. Um, but as I said, I like to actually use armor these days. And uh, that's why I don't go with the feral starter kit. Anyway, uh, let's just go ahead and quit this. And let's actually play the game. So for people who normally watch my channel, you guys are probably like, I don't care how to do it. Just do it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well done. Here's my miraculous score screen from the game. The world I just started and then didn't really, uh, didn't really finish. But, yeah. Anyway. Um, all right. Let's, let's do this thing for real. All right. Tribes of Midgard solo. Let's do it. Now, this game's kind of like a mix between Don't Starve and, like, Tower Defense games, as you guys will see. Um, and it's really addicting. I, I got into it playing with friends, and I figured out how to solo it. And, like, I personally like playing games where you can solo really difficult things on, like, a high... If you get your game down well enough. So, this game just sort of speaks to me. Um, when you start the game, you know, you can do season one, two, or three. We're going to get all three of these bosses and the prologue, which you always get. Um, it doesn't matter which of these you select, but whichever one you select, it will tell you what to do next based on which season you're in. I go to season three because season one and two, you don't need the hints, but season three, it's helpful to know how many more bad guys of a certain kind you need to kill. So I just always pick season three. Okay, first order of business, I need to find some stone and some wood, because before I go too far away from the base, I want a shield and an axe. And so, you can just use your special attack to knock down any trees like that. You're supposed to actually farm, um, which, ooh, if you see a berry tree, ah, uh, great. Try and break it. Uh, we didn't. Um, so that you can get some berries. Berries are good for making potions. Um, I've kind of screwed up already in that I don't have any stone, but as you'll see, it's not really going to be a problem. This is why the Feral Starter Kit, even though you get a weapon, it's not too important. Um, we need to pick a quest, so I'm just going to pick... Um, I'll pick Killing a Witch. It's a pretty easy quest. Um, killing goblins in the Smoky Highland is a joke because you have to kill them in the hideout anyway, so that's always a good quest to pick. I'm gonna grab my shield, which is all I can afford right now. And the one thing I'll remember to do here is close my gate. Now, this is kind of a bad start, to be honest. But maybe this will be a good way to show you guys that you don't have to play perfect in order to get all three bosses. I mean, I don't even have a weapon right now, honestly. If there was... Okay, good, there is. If there's a little camp here of uh, these early level dudes, there's usually one near your base. You can get some leather off of them, sometimes a weapon, but what they're good for is recharging your special attack. So even when you're unarmed, you have a special attack, which is a, uh, a kick. And as you see, I just, you know, I just owned those guys even without a weapon. So you don't necessarily need a weapon to start off. Well, the important thing is I've charged my kick back up. 
Ooh, wolves. That's actually advantageous, too. You do need some wolf teeth if you want to get a raider axe. Which we can get a level 2 raider axe. Okay, stone, stone. There's some stone down there. Seriously, there's no stone. This is a terrible start. Oh, there's some stone. Okay, I'm hoping for four. I got two. Jesus, this is terrible. This is the worst start I've had in a while for this game. My god. I'm gonna go with it, though. Again, I want to show you guys it can be done. Stone. Anybody? Stone. There's another piece. All right. All right, we got five stone. That's plenty. That's all you need. Now, normally, this would be right where you spawn. And within your first three kicks, you can knock down one to two trees to get four wood, which is what you need for a shield, and one to two stones to get what you need for a stone. Raider Axe is what we're going to get. And we can already afford Raider Axe, too, because we killed some wolves. So I'm going to go for it. And uh, we are already on the move. So now, next order of business. Oh, and we have leather, so might as well armor up. Now we are the chicken man. So at this point, what we're looking for now are bridges, because bridges have uh, wood and stone, if we can break down barricades. We're looking for checkpoints, so that little star on the map there. So here's an example of a barricade. Find as many of these as you can and break them down. And the best way to go through the world is just follow the paths on the world because they will lead you to all the major landmarks that you need. Every checkpoint like this, find it, open it up. Just like that, that's all you need to do. Um, it is helpful to clear out some enemy camps like this one over here so that you can level up. Use your shield to block attacks and then just attack enemies when they are stunned. Um, it's pretty much as easy as that, the combat in this game. Use special abilities if the enemies try and chase you. Um, seaweed, it's always good to grab a couple of seaweed so that you can uh, craft level 3 healing potions later on, but don't go nuts farming for anything because a lot of it is not essential. Clearing out these chests gets you new items. Well, that's good. Uh, I'll grab one more seaweed. That'll probably be all the seaweed I will bother farming this entire game. So yeah, you can like farm all sorts of materials. It very much is like Don't Starve, only with Vikings and monsters, which is kind of fun. Um, but, uh, you know, you largely do not need to farm too much if you're trying to speed run to get the three bosses. And trust me, to get the three bosses, it's not hard. It can be done. Even with my bad start, I guarantee it's going to happen. Um, but if you do dick around too much, uh, with stuff you don't need to be doing, you will run out of time. Um, I don't even have the materials, by the way, right now to farm. Uh, so you're supposed to get like an axe, like a, you know, an axe for chopping down trees, not a combat axe. And also, uh, you know, uh, a pickaxe. I don't even have those yet. As you'll see, that doesn't really matter too much. If you ever pass a material you really want and you don't have an axe, just throw your special ability out like that and it will break. See, I just broke a tree there. So you can, you can harvest stuff even without uh, the proper tools. But eventually you do just want to grab a pickaxe real quick. Uh, and a hatchet, because you will will be advantageous to have those things. Use your shield, block attacks, don't just take hits needlessly. Um, here's a barricade, another barricade, alright, so this is two down. I'm gonna aim for the quarry on day three, because I had a slow start, but... If I could do a day two quarry, that would be even better, so we'll see. Um, I have two skill points, so I'm gonna level up. Uh, I want to pick a sentinel, and the shield throw. The whole reason I picked the Sentinel is the shield throw, and you guys will see, it is so dang useful. Um, I'm going to stop clearing out these little bandit camps, because truthfully, these guys... So yeah, I'm like throwing my shield. It's so cool. It's like this Captain America style shield that ricochets and stuns guys. So helpful. Um, but these bandit camps are not terribly useful to me. And in fact, I desperately need to find a swamp. Um, roll off cliffs if you need to. You take a bit of damage, but who cares? 
Um, I am not even going to get my good weapon. Man, this is a terrible run. So the reason that you want to try and find... Oh, here's a tree that has berries so I can get healing potions. I just broke it, as you can see there. Didn't even need an axe. I'm going to ignore that guy because I'm really hopeful that I can find a swamp before nightfall. Or I don't think I can. I'm going to try and unlock this so I can teleport near one. God, there's just nothing. Wow. Okay. Always kill a couple of deer or something so that you can get uh, some of their meat because you will need their meat uh, to craft um, cold potions. If you're not a seer, you do have to worry about the cold. Not like you don't have to care at all, but it's very easy to manage. A few basic items. Damn. So swamps are another biome that usually spawn... Oh, here's a werewolf. Werewolves are pretty easy. You just block, and then they get stunned, and then you get a couple of swipes in. And then they're dead. Oh, here is a, here's a swamp. Okay, we're getting into the swamp at night. Oh, and there's mushrooms. Perfect. This is what you want. Your first night, you want to be in a swamp area so that you can grab some nighttime mushrooms. They'll be glowing like this. Do not grab mushrooms during the day if you can help it. Um, you don't really need them during the day. I mean, you can grab one or two so that you can use the mushroom oil to make healing potions. Berries, mushrooms, and seaweed are the things you need to make all the different kinds of healing potions. But don't go crazy grabbing them during the day, because if you can't find any at night, go back to where you've seen them during the day and grab them. I have so many now that I'm set. I don't need any more. That was very lucky. So your first night, you want to be in a swamp to grab the mushrooms. Um, that's going to make the axe that basically you can have until the end of the game. It's your end game axe. It's the best weapon you need. I mean, again, there's other weapons I've seen people recommend, and none of them are bad. But it's just, this is all you need, is basically what I'm saying. Um, now, notice that my axe in the bottom left is getting a little damage. I'm going to have to run back to town and repair that. Um... So the reason you want to unlock these checkpoints is so you can fast travel. If you are running across the map, you are wasting daylight, you will run out of time, you will not have enough time to kill all the bosses. I'm going to check my materials. I only have five cut stone. I need nine. I know that to unlock the quarry, so I can't unlock it yet. You almost don't even have to worry about the other materials that you need to unlock the quarry, because if you have nine cut stone... You pretty much have whatever else you need. It's almost guaranteed. Um, as long as you've been breaking those barriers. Now, I'm not done in the swamp. I got the nighttime mushrooms. I need to find about three of the lizards that hang around. The sort of lizard dragon creatures. Um, I should have actually grabbed um, a pickaxe while I was in town. But again, forgot about it. Don't beat yourself up if you forget. It is really not important. Um, I have gone through entire playthroughs where I forget to get that. Okay, so this is a troll. He is not who we want necessarily. Axe or shield throw there. Take out all these little guys. That is why you are the sentinel. This kills them all, gets them out of the way. Um, these guys are pretty easy. A couple of swipes and then you dodge. They can never hit you. I like to dodge behind them because they do one attack. That one right there, where if you dodge away from them, they will actually get you. Um, you can like use your abilities too to kill these guys. Oh, he got me again. And again, I, I'm just getting a little impatient there. All right, he's dead. Um, speed elixirs, none of those really matter. I'm looking for snakes and I have eight cut stone. So one more good bridge. And I can go into town and uh, I can build that quarry. Let's see if this bridge over here. Now this is a fire sort of camp or whatever. I'll start clearing these out once I get my ax that I get from the lizards. But um, yeah, oh, that's another thing. See how that explosion just occurred? Those stupid little goblins will, when they die, leave little bulbs that explode. Oh, perfect. Here's the, the dragon I was just talking about shield to clear out the little guys oh look somebody chased me 
Okay, he ran away. Um, but it's nice to have the shield to kill the little guys because they do drop those explosives. So it's like the shield later on is just going to basically one shot them. And you can just get a whole bunch of them at once because the shield ricochets and then you don't have to be anywhere near them when they explode. Um, okay, actually, let me just check something real quick. I might be able to forge that last piece of stone that I need. Oh, sweet, another dragon. Perfect. You do have to kill about two or three of these guys in order to get the uh, final version of the axe that you want. So this is actually perfect. I used to find these guys really annoying and run from them until I realized you could make an amazing axe from them. So we're like level four. It's still, let's day two. We're about to have the end game weapon. Uh, and once you have that, you can basically clear out any kind of camp you want. Because here's the secret with the Sentinel. Oh, there's another one. Perfect. That will be the last one that I need to kill. He was right up here, wasn't he? Yep. I'm going to use my special ability to get that silver too, just in case I need a bit of silver. So I also like to build the Raider Axe in addition to this purple one that I'm going to build. And you'll see the Raider Axe, it needs a little bit of silver and wolf's teeth. Wolves attack you randomly in different biomes. Not the swamp, but in other biomes they will. Um, I like the Raider Axe because it has a spinning axe attack, which is really good against Fenrir. But again, it's not necessarily essential. Uh, the purple axe is all you really need. Another ad... Uh, another advantage of the purple axe is it has a heal ability in it so if you're running through the desert or the arctic areas and you're starting to take heat damage or cold damage you can just pop a heal um, and that will usually sustain you a little bit I'm going to try and remember to get the uh, uh, pickaxe and stuff while I'm here let's upgrade this guy upgrade him again and here's level one of the axe and we're immediately going to go to level two. We now have our end game weapon. Um, I can get a Raider Axe level three. I'll get that as well as a backup weapon. Um, and now let's see if we can actually get... So we can level her. Okay, so we can get the stone, but we don't have enough money anymore. You need 600 to build the quarry. So... Oh, I built the wrong thing. There we go. All right, so I have a little few tools here. Um, a Jotun just spawned. Those are the giants that run around this world. Okay, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to get my quarry up ASAP. I'm going to come clear this camp over here. Get a bit of money. Get my quarry up. Oh, and there's some wolves. See, wolves just attack you randomly. Stun all these guys with the shield, and then once they're stunned, again, doesn't matter how powerful they are, you have a pretty powerful weapon, and they're stunned. So I think this is what makes the, um, the Sentinel a little overpowered, is the fact that uh, you can just stun virtually all the mobs. Okay, Cory is way up to the north. That's just kind of a pain in the butt. So Jotuns are giant Viking demigods that spawn that slowly move toward your village and try to kill kill it. So the village that's in the middle of town there, um, demons spawn at night and try and kill it. Uh, when you're playing solo, you don't really need to bother. Um, get some more berries. You don't really not need to bother defending the village except on Blood Moon nights, which is where a bunch of things will spawn. On normal nights, you can kind of avoid it and spend your evenings actually doing things. If you're playing multiplayer though, the hell things at night are more powerful and you really do need to uh, actually defend your base. But anyway. All right, Cory is up on day two. We are set. Jotun is kind of down to the left. So he's probably over there somewhere. Um, pretty much at this stage, once the quarry is up and you've got your uh, weapon, all you're trying to do now is manage the Jotuns. Uh, when events pop up, do the events. You want to also um, make sure you're doing your quest. I should have taken the wolves one in retrospect. Um, I'm going to take the elite creatures, whatever. 
Uh, actually, well, uh, <laughs> I'll leave it on the witch hunt. Um. Oh, and I haven't been up using my up my upgrades. So I'm gonna take double shield and a little bit of health. I've done all sorts of different things. You can take damage if you prefer the damage. It doesn't really make a difference. It's interesting how so many of your decisions here don't make a huge difference as long as your base gameplay is like on point. So for Jotuns, there's two ways to deal with them. One is you can just wait till they're close to your village and then kill them. Because on solo, the first two to three Jotuns you can pretty much kill really fast. Um, oh, there's another. I mean, I don't need this, but I don't know. I'm getting it anyway. Um, another strategy is to, once they spawn, get them very low health. And then um, leave them until they get close to your village. And then just come and one-shot them. Um, you can do that if you want. You can see this big boy here. Um... The only reason to do that is once a Jotun spawns, you have about three days till another one spawns. So if you're having trouble dealing with the Jotuns, it's nice to have like a bigger break between them. I used to do that, but frankly, now I like killing them. So <laughs> I'm just going to totally destroy this guy. Um, as you can see, he goes down really fast. Again, I've got a pretty good weapon here. And it is still like day two. Um, and he's gone. I like killing them because they sometimes drop very valuable runes. The rune you want to find, we only have two, the starter runes that we had, but the rune, you get runes from killing big bosses and stuff. The rune you want to find is soul powered. It grants you more damage based on the amount of souls you have, which is your money, your gold. And frankly, it is very easy in this game to get 10,000, which is the max that soul powered will, um, will work on and if you have 10,000 uh, souls and you have soul powered you literally melt everything in the game you do so much damage that it's it's not even funny uh, I don't know where these guys are running to like avoiding me so you can see how useful the shield stun is there I just stunned a whole group of those guys I think there's a bad guy spawned inside the building there um, hopefully he cannot hit me with his arrows. So you want to start clearing out these like fire palace camp things. You also want to start clearing out any camp near the coast. That will simultaneously be working on uh, the quests for um, the, uh, the, the serpent boss and the fire boss. So you don't really want to bother with like, like these little goblins. Don't really bother with their camps. It's a waste of your time. Unless you need experience for some reason. I'm just going to get this checkpoint up here. In fact, these dragons are now starting to become a waste of my time. So, okay, I will have to... Oh my god, there's a troll there. You know what? I'm not even going to bother with this checkpoint because I just... Uh, they might drop a... No, I take it back. They might drop a um, uh, rune. And I could really use a soul-powered rune. Um... Okay, that orb that just spawned out of me came because I must have picked up uh, another rune. So in the bottom right corner, you can see the three runes that I've got. There's two purple and one blue. The blue one, it's like every time you get a critical hit, it has a chance of spawning a um, an orb that will fly around and do damage to enemies. Um, okay, did not give me a good rune. Okay. Get this. Pop back into town real quick and repair my weapon because you can see my purple axe, the durability, the health on it is quite low. So this is one thing I find that takes up a lot of your time, constantly coming back to town to repair your weapons. This is why killing Fenrir, killing the first boss, uh, killing him first is so advantageous. Um, actually, I am going to upgrade this guy a bit. This is your potion master. So you health potion two, cold potion, and heat potion three, or health potion three. Those are the three potions you'll bother him with. And uh in fact, let's go and get that deer. So a deer just spawned. I'm going to just drop 
these things. These things are good for killing certain enemies. I don't know. There's so much to tell you guys. Okay, we have one cold potion. As you guys will see, it'll be enough. I don't have any cold gear. I'm going to just go run through the Arctic right now. And this is just to show you guys, you don't have to be afraid of the Arctic. The desert, you overheat if you're in the desert. But there's a couple of tips for getting through that. One, go at night. If there, you have any spare evening and you want to go run through a desert, just go at night. You'll be fine. Oops, I wanted that. The other is if you start to overheat in the desert, just look for a river and dive into it. Your guy can only swim for about 20 seconds before he starts to drown. That's plenty of time. Um, you don't need to worry about uh, overheating in the desert typically. And if you start to overheat, pop a heal, use health potions. You know, just get to the next... Uh, the next point that, that will cool you down, you'll be fine. So any checkpoint will instantly cool you down. Um, so that is a good thing to kind of aim for. Oh, I could have just exited the, the Arctic over here. Exit. Um, but yeah, in if you're ever in a cold or hot area and you're starting to take damage, look for the nearest checkpoint or building, run to it. Once you're near it, you'll stop taking damage instantly. So the buildings will always have neutral temperature and they're like safe havens when you're in these colder areas. Um, look how easy the Sentinel takes care of groups of guys. It is hilarious. So yeah, here's an example of, so this building would keep me warm if I was getting cold. This checkpoint over here will keep me warm. So there's plenty of places in uh, the uh, Arctic and the, the desert areas to stay warm. Another werewolf. Stun him. Stun him. Stun him. Stun him. Keep that shield up. And he's done. Werewolves can do a lot of damage to you if you just run in and you don't bother defending or anything. But one thing I learned about this game is use your shield. <laughs> the sentinel can even throw his shield, but use your shield. Alright, so this is a stag. Oh, wolves. Alright, shield took care of them. This is a stag. You need to get at least two events if you want to get all the bosses, so this is my first event. Um, I'll just keep an eye out for the second one. It'll come on like day six or so. But at this stage, um, I'm on day three. Again, clearing out more camps is always handy. I'll get this one because it's here, even though I told you guys to start skipping these guys' camps. It's right here, why not get it? Not yep, more guys. Block and kill. Um, you don't have to be the sentinel, by the way. The warrior is totally fine. You won't be able to throw your shield, but you'll do some more damage. So, like, the sentinel is really good at dealing with groups of guys. Uh, the warrior does more damage against bosses and single units and stuff, so... They all have their pros and cons. Um, I'm gonna use this checkpoint down here. At this stage... The only major thing left to do is the hideout. And you can find the hideout. It will be, there'll be a desert biome, but it will have a wall around it like this. And you're going to want to look for the entrance. I've seen this uh, hideout biome all over the place. Sometimes I've seen it in Arctic areas. You have to run through an Arctic area, then run through a desert. Uh, and it's, again, I think it's a bit of a pain. This one's pretty easy. You can see the gate over there to the left. Just gonna wipe these guys out while I'm here. You can see I'm taking some damage, but you know my shields really make short work of a lot of these guys. And down they go. Any stragglers the shield will take care of. And we're clearing this out. So the reason we're clearing out these fortresses here is we're trying to get money and resources to open um, the Arctic Gate which is right over here. You have to clear out about four of these outposts. I think we've done two or three by now. So as you can see, like we're almost, we've almost opened up a whole other quest while we're just working on our first quest. So a lot of these things are simultaneous, which is handy. I just ran into the hideout. Okay, my weapon is fine. I was gonna say, I, um, I didn't bother checking the durability of my weapon, but actually, this isn't, this isn't the hideout hideout. This is just sort of a little dungeon that leads you into the, um, the desert valley. 
So, yeah, you don't even have to be as high level as I am now. I mean, I'm not even that high level, level 7. There's only 10 levels, um, and then you've sort of maxed your character out. So we're on day 3, and we're pretty much almost done with experience. I haven't even assigned two of my experience points, so I'm kind of a level uh, 5, truthfully. But I've just been too busy. <laughs> ah, stupid goblins. So the shield makes such short work of the goblins. And watch out for see the little pulsating ball. You gotta watch those. Anytime you kill a gobl goblin, move away from them. Because you just never know if they're gonna drop a little explosive ball. And those things will kill you. So that's how you screw up and die in this game. You, if you're not paying attention. And I'm just gonna assign my skill points. And I have a second, so I went with Axe and Thunder damage, because my Axe is Thunder-based, that will give me a big damage boost. Um, again, pick the skills you like. You know, whatever fits your playstyle is fine. Um, because it is night, I'm going to continue to explore the desert here and try and find the, um, the hideout entrance. I'm just going to ignore these guys, because they're just kind of in the way. Islands. Okay, so there's a checkpoint down there, but we don't really need it. Uh, in the desert, mining obsidian that I just got there, and the red stone. I think it's called Garrett or something like that. Those are the only two resources you need to bother with. And only grab a few. The only reason you're getting those is so you can craft a couple of pieces of armor for the fire guy. So here's a red redstone. I'll get it. So you can see Garnet. Um, you don't need a ton, you just need enough to make a couple of pieces of armor. And if you want to clear out a few camps, you can, and you know, you'll get some pieces from doing that. But... Okay, notice in the top right corner, the calendar has a red circle around it. That means that um, this evening... Uh, the base is going to come under heavy attack. And so tonight is the first night that I'm actually going to defend the base. You can see I'm starting to overheat. I'm just going to pop the heal on my axe. It'll sustain me enough. Ooh, here's some obsidian. Like, I'm taking heat damage and I'm not even panicked right now. I just got enough charge of my axe to do another heal if I need to. I'm going to take care of this guy so he doesn't disrupt trying to unlock that gate. And I'll just do another heal. And if I needed to, I have health potions. But I didn't need it. Fast travel back to base. I'll fully heal up there. So, I mean, that's about the extent you need to worry about temperature damage in this game. I mean, don't go in unprepared. Don't go in like crazy, like, oh, nothing could kill me. You'll end up dying. But at the same time, just be aware of it and manage it. And it's pretty easy. Up over here and get a heal. Okay, I'm gonna switch this to the defeat elite creatures thing. Because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna face some elite creatures in the hideout. And screw it, let's do the hideout. Let's see if we can get it done. So off we go. I am kind of rushing this a little. Truthfully, I could take this a little slower, but I don't know, I kind of want to show you guys what's possible, so if we have to teleport out of the hideout, we will. Um, I just defeated 75 goblin type enemies, that's cool. Got some little achievement there. Um, when you're in the hideout, if you're going to heal, use level 3 healing potions because you get a lot of level 3 healing potions um, in the hideout. So one thing that concerns me a little is my shield is about to break, and as the sentinel, I really need my shield. I should have repaired it in town. I got sloppy. I do have one other shield, though, so if it breaks, I'll be okay. Um, you, you pick up random weapons and shields and stuff as you uh, go through um, the different camps and stuff, so... Usually you're not totally screwed, but I have been in a situation where uh, I encountered a higher level enemy than I wanted, and I was not uh, not ready for it. 
And you have to kind of improvise in those scenarios, right? Just do your best. It all worked out. Um, anyway. So in the hideout, there's three levels. We just cleared the first level. Each level has like a doorway and a switch. In the first level, the doorway is right beside the switch. In the second level here, the switch and the doorway will be separated. So we'll have to find the switch before the doorway. I've done these hideouts enough. There's only like four or five different kinds in total, maybe even like three. So there's not a ton of different varieties. I'm taking some damage here because I'm trying not to use my shield, although I probably should just use the shield. Um, yeah, so it's like, I'll block this guy. So you can see just how much damage the werewolves will do if you let them. And I got my finger over the healing potion. I just healed. Didn't need to because I leveled up, as it turns out, but... It's all good. Um, there is a fountain up here, which I will grab just so I can heal more. And here's another chest. Finding these chests in the hideout is good uh, because they are usually, they do usually give you lots of really good stuff. But again, it's not super essential. Um, you can see, by the way, so here's the switch, and then we'll go find the door after this. Um, you can see, by the way, though, I have 6,700, uh, you know, souls. If I had soul-powered, I'd be doing, like, triple damage by now. Like, it's very easy to get money in this game, and it's very easy to do a lot of damage, so. There we go, here's the exit. So now we just got to kill the bosses in here, and I think it's going to be a couple of trolls. I think that's it. Again, there's only a couple different versions of this. Um, oh no, it's going to be werewolves. I'm going to pop a heal, and then keeping my finger over that heal button in case they do more damage than I think. I could have blocked the attacks once it's down to one werewolf, but it's all good. Just gonna power through this. That's eh, all it took. And here's the hideout chest. You can only open this once you've killed all the, uh, uh, you know, enemies on this level. So you can't just run in and steal the, the hideout thing. Souls potion is good. I'm just gonna drop this thing. Souls potion gives you souls. I like to use them instantly. Waystone portion lets. Potion lets you revive your waystone. We haven't used our waystone yet, but at any point you can click R3 to teleport back to town. If you're on top of unlocking your checkpoints, there's usually a checkpoint nearby. You don't have to use your waystone. But there's no harm. If you gotta use it, use it, you know. If you need to get back to town and you're far from town, get to town. Don't not use it. Um, another Jotun spawned. We probably have enough time to go kill him before we even need to go back to our town to defend, so well, let's do that. Why not? This is the nighttime Jotun, I can already tell from the mist. And she's pretty easy. Or he, or whoever it is. First attack, so first of all, the lightning axe or whatever that we've got does bonus damage against the night, the, the demon creatures. So you'll just melt these guys pretty easily. But watch out for that blue orb there. That will kill you. Um, at this level, this early in the game, it probably won't kill kill you, but it will do enough damage that uh, you're risking it. So the enemy alternates back and forth between the orb and spawning dudes. Just uh, be mindful of what they're doing. I'm going to switch to my other axe here so that I don't destroy my purple axe. You can repair even a weapon that's been destroyed, but it's always cheaper to repair something that hasn't been fully destroyed, so. Tips, 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 tips! Welcome to Gaming Jay's tip line. I will tell you everything you need to know about this game. I'll switch back to my axe, because I'm going back into town. All right. I pretty much have cleared the quest. Oh, I need to go collect my quest rewards. Uh, let's do that real quick. Where was it? Right over there. 
Yeah. You don't have to be back in town right as soon as night falls because the evil hell things, they take a little while before your base really starts to, like, come in peril. But let's turn in our quest. We got it. All right. We have now completed a quest, an event, the hideout, and killed a Jotun. We can now open Fenrir's lair. We can kill the first boss. The only thing we need now is stone to rebuild the bridge, and we actually have to find the bridge because I haven't found it yet. Um, those last two things are very easy. We can probably do them tomorrow if we wanted. It will just depend on if we can find that bridge, if the map cooperates with us. So we're at the end of day four. We could go kill Fenrir by day, uh, day five if we want. Here are the hell things that attack your base at night. Your gates are pretty strong these days in uh, single player mode. Um, but look out for the big purple dots. I can see over here, there's a big boy over here, the yellow health guy. I like to open the gates as a sentinel, let them come in, and then hit them with my shield when they're in the choke point. Stun them, damage them. You can see you're doing so much damage that you're not going to have a trouble killing the guys, but the thing that's annoying is running between these gates. If the gates get destroyed, you can rebuild them. It just wastes some resources. Just don't let them get that low on health and you'll be fine. Um, if a gate is really low on health, you can just leave it open and manage the guys as they come in. And that's usually fine. Your NPCs will help defend your base too, so you don't have to worry about a couple of guys coming in one at a time or not going to overwhelm you. But if you let swarms of guys build up, they will overwhelm you um, and get you. Anyway, I'm going to leave my base now. It's defended enough. You don't have to wait till the end of the night. And I'll just throw, I guess, this will be my extra point. Um, the other reason not to wait till the end of the night is to just get a move on with the other things that you need to do. Um, so I'm going to guess that the bridge might actually be up there. Yeah, I didn't even get out of town, but you can see the guys didn't bother breaking the gates down. They're not strong enough that uh, early in the game. Like, if your gates have a lot of health and there's not that much time left in night, they're, they're just not going to get in. So just don't, don't bother, uh, you know, waiting. Just move on. Get to the other things you need to be doing. Uh, time is your... Not enemy, but it is it is the main resource of this game. It's not health, and it's not items or resource or actual resources. It's literally time. So let's run up here and see. So I unlocked a quarry on day three, which is pretty good. I'm not even going to kill that guy this time, the snake, because he's not even worth it my time anymore. This guy's not really worth my time. Kind of moved on from dealing with all these guys. But here's the fun of the Sentinel. Get out of here! <laughs> Just crush them all. There's the gates. Yeah. So see, follow the... Oh, you bastard. Follow the path. Okay, I guess we do got to kill this guy. Are oh, you running away? All right, get out of here. Um, follow the path. It will take you to the gate. Um... You need 50 stone to unlock the gate. So I'm going to quick travel back to town and see what we can do. If you don't have enough stone, just kill some time clearing out more of the lava camps and the coastal camps to get, keep your other bases, your other, uh, you know, um, challenges going. So all the stone and iron you can carry. And you now while I'm here... I'm going to upgrade you. Okay, hold on. Upgrade. Let's see if we can afford any fire armor. Ooh, we can get uh, that. And we can get that. Maybe we can get some gloves. No, we can't. All right, I have two pieces of fire armor. Chances are that's going to be tons. I probably won't need any more. Um, let's see here. We have 48 stone, so we need two more. So I'm just going to go and craft two more. You can usually squeeze out a couple more pieces of whatever you need. Because, uh, okay, I need eight more stone. 
And to make, so I need 16 of these. And that gives me two more, yeah. I was able to squeeze out two more pieces of cut stone. And off we go to the races. Now we had a blood moon where our base was heavily under attack. Um, tonight, the enemies aren't even going to come, so you don't even have to go to your base, period. It's not like your base is going to last without you. It's like you don't even need to go. Um, so I'm I'm just not. <laughs> um, we're going to focus on killing Fenrir. There we go. Um, you got to kill enemies that are around you when you're trying to unlock your uh, fast travel points or whatever. But anyway, keep following the path like I'm doing. The path, you move faster on the path, and again, it leads you to all your major things. So we are just now looking for uh, Fenrir's gateway. Probably up this way somewhere. If anybody chases you, you're a sentinel. Stun them. Um, yeah, here we go. I like to unlock the checkpoints just in case I screw up the boss. And probably you should too if you don't have a lot of experience fighting them. But truthfully, you don't really need to. If you're confident enough, you just run in here and uh, unlock and go. Um, now, we were able to unlock instantly because we had, again, event, quest, hideout, and Jotun fragments. You need all of those. It's a lot to keep in mind, but again, you know, a lot of that just came automatically. We picked up a quest early on. We did one event. The Jotun takes care of itself. And then you just kind of do the hideout. You muck around, do the hideout. Clear some camps, level up, and you're ready for the first boss. It's really, uh, really that simple. I forgot to assign all my skill points, but it'll be fine. It won't matter. Um, for Fenrir here, stay under him. When he howls, get to his tail. That's really all you need to do. He has a fair amount of health, but you'll see it will melt. Now, if we had a soul-powered... Oh man, Soul Powered is my dream uh, rune. Again, he would be melting right now. Absolutely melting. So if you, I used to think Soul Powered sucked. I used to be like, oh, pfft, it's so hard to keep money in this game. I don't want to have to be dependent on having it. But no, get a Soul Powered, use it every time, equip it anytime you find it. I had one run where I had two Soul Powereds and literally the bosses we're just done in like 30 seconds. It was crazy. It is, it is the god, the god tier. Two soul powers and a, uh, and 10,000 bucks in your pocket. And you'll kill anyone. Now, I like, um, this axe is pretty good against him. So I just switched to my raider axe here. This is the axe that all you need is a little bit of stone, silver, and wolf's teeth, and you get that really easily. And I will show you why that axe is really good. So once he goes through his cycle here, so this ability lets you spin three axes around you, and I am now hitting him like five times at once. It's really good for this one and only boss. Um... It is only a blue tier weapon though. So it's like its base attack is weaker than a purple. But the fact that you can, oh God, kind of got trapped under there. Um, you can see even if you screw up a little, you don't take too much damage from Fenrir. I mean, the other main strategy in this game is to go naked and use the Feral Kit where you do bonus damage if you're naked. Um, and you can do that. And you, it, it does do more damage against him, but you're just far more likely to just dodge through these. You're far more likely to um, actually accidentally die <laughs> that way. So, I mean, it's not it's not a bad strategy. I, I, I did used to use it. Um, I just like the new uh, starter kits that give you the bola and the uh, cedar weaver. These. They kind of have to, like, be at his tail, but be aimed at his bum to actually damage him. It's kind of like an interesting, like, attack frame there. Um, I'm going to go back to my uh, lightning axe. 
Yeah, I'm taking a little damage here and there. Just use your potions. Just watch for when he starts to howl. Roll through those things when they spawn. Easy, guys. Oh, God. Run out from the back between his legs. It's a lot easier. So this is, I think, the one challenge of the Sentinel, is that you don't melt bosses as fast as, say, like a warrior would. Um, and so, you know, if you, prefer, it, it, if you prefer to, you know, have worse crowd control abilities but be able to melt bosses, maybe you want to do the warrior. Again, I used to play warrior. It was the first class, you know, when that, that isn't locked when you first get this game. Not a bad class. Not impossible to do this, but I just like the Sentinel so much. His stun ability, Captain America's shield throw, makes it so easy. Oh yeah, and when this stuff happens, I like to just sort of get the hell out of there. There's actually uh, two versions of this boss. There's another version where he's sort of like undead and he summons like wolves to help him fight. Um, that one is actually, I think, easier, except at some point he summons two yellow health wolf mini-bosses, and you just really gotta watch those guys, because those guys will kill you if you're being a little sloppy. Notice that our weapons are literally almost out of durability. Like, fighting him has worn our weapons down to the nub. This is why you want to kill this guy first, because this will happen on all the bosses, and it is... A colossal pain to like you know we're gonna get him but we're so close to having to like go to town and uh you know repair our weapons oh god okay that was a bad spot we could have actually died there but we got him instead um we almost had to teleport back to town to repair our weapons um but Fortunately, we did not need to. Okay. Fenrir's Rune. I'm going to take off this one, which is doing nothing for us, and put this one on. This one does 20% more damage, but you take 20% more damage too, and I've actually been killed using it, so I actually don't like it. I would avoid it myself, but if you're cocky, you can use it. Um, anyway, our weapon we now no longer need to repair. Yes, despite the fact that it is insanely damaged, it's on the brink of life, it doesn't matter, we're fine. Um, I think I will repair it just so it's not constantly right there damaged, but you don't have to worry about repairing anything anymore. You are set. Um, so at this point now, we can focus on the last two bosses. I'm going to come in here. You can buy runes here. I'm just going to buy one and see what I get. Pumped up. Pumped up isn't a bad one. It gives you more damage if you have max mana. So I'm gonna turn that one on. I was really hoping I could get a soul, uh, soul powered, and show you guys the true power of the Viking, but I don't think it's meant to be this time around. I can get a bit more heal and a bit more damage to stunned enemies, and I am now maxed out. Um, and you can see I didn't even really need to. I, I beat the first boss, and I wasn't even fully leveled up. So you guys, you can do them on level eight. Um, since I'm passing this gate, I'm going to see if I have enough to open it yet. I need two more Moose Polites. Whatever the hell you say that. So I'm going to get that, but I'm also on my way to get my second event. Ow. Jerk. So I'm heading down to the... Um, let's grab this. Heading down to this event that's here, and there's a couple of lava camps, so. These are some tough guys that are defending Otto. He got taken prisoner or something like that. I don't know. We rescued him already. It's over. <laughs> the Sentinel just makes such short work of groups of dudes. It's a dude killing party. So that was pretty easy to find Otto. Sometimes for these events, you gotta wander around the region that they're in, and find them and it's a big pain but we got that quick we'll clear this uh other lava area here see my shields are now becoming so powerful they're pretty much 
just killing guys. Forget about stunning them. They're like full on killing them. Fire guys explode when they die, so remember to roll away from them. They're like guaranteed goblin explosions. These little guys there. So make sure to avoid them. Um, you can see on my radar, um, a rune actually was dropped. I'm gonna go check that out, because again, if it's soul powered, I want it. No, oh, a boar was coming to kill me. Uh, other runes that are good pumped up is not bad. Um, there's one called Cold Blooded, where you actually, it's impossible to take cold damage. You heal as you take cold damage. That's a cool one to get, like if you're concerned about, uh, you know, cold damage. Just get uh, pumped up. You'll be totally fine. Um, I'm going to think of other ones that are pretty good. I mean, I've got... Uh, let's see, what have I got here? Bola Weaver and Cedar Weaver. Bola is pretty cool because it stuns guys. And again, it's more useful than you'd think. Cedar Weaver is handy too because it's like Legend of Zelda style bolt. Gets shot out of your weapon every periodically and... Damages guys, so that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I kind of laser visioned on, uh, you know, uh, what you call it, soul powered these days. It's my golden one. I also like Winter's Wake. It drops a blizzard periodically when you kill guys, or Memer's Well, or Mimi's Well, or something like that. It drops uh, a black orb that sucks people into the void and then explodes and kills them. So I unlocked this island, even though I'm not quite ready to do- I mean, I could. I'm not taking any heat damage. I could totally do this right now if I wanted and make this my second one. I like to just do this one third. I don't know why. Um, but I unlocked it because you have to kill 30 Lavateers. If you look on the left side of the screen, it says defeat 6 out of 30 Lavateers. So I've killed 6. Once the gate is unlocked, you can kill them anywhere on the map. So if I clear out a camp over here, it will count towards that. So one of the reasons it is handy to unlock that gate as soon as you can. To unlock, you need some event tokens. So you need a second event, usually. Or a first, if you haven't killed the... Uh, you haven't spent it on uh, Fenrir's gate yet. Four boats is all you need, so I'll just max out and get four. Um, oh, and a Jotun is on the map. Good to know. Let's go kill him. Uh, but what was I saying? Um, he's already made it over there. Eh? I'll kill him. Uh, but yeah, you can kill those guys anywhere on the map, and it just makes unlocking the island faster. If uh, Because sometimes when you're on the island, you're trying to find the guys to kill. It's like they're not spawning and you're just running in circles waiting. So you can spawn to these camps, these fire camps, and you can just kill guys in there and that will unlock your first level gate. So little tip if you're having trouble doing that. Oh, look at this. So many guys, eh? I'm just gonna power this guy down quickly. This guy, he's the, the sort of tornado guy, or girl, I suppose. Um, I guess she takes less damage from the uh, Thunder Axe because she's of the same uh, element, but truthfully, it does so much damage, it doesn't really matter. Um, when you kill this Yosin, you actually can build one of the best swords in the game. And I used to build it, but I stopped because, like, I just found it just didn't do very much more than this axe, and I just like the axe so much. I think the thing about the axe is it has a ranged attack, and it has the heal utility. And I like the heal utility if you get caught up in uh, an environment that you just don't have the armor for. So, like, if you're in the desert, or you're in the Arctic, or something like that. Now she's going to turn into a tornado mode, which actually makes her easier. So at this point, I need to be clearing um, coastal camps. I need to find... So at this point, what you need to do is sail to three different islands and light three different beacons. I don't like to do this quest first because clearing the beacons actually has some enemies that are a little resilient. 
and a little annoying and a little tough. And so I like to be like level 10 by the time I get to them, just so that I can clear them easily. But I have done them earlier, it is possible. Um, it just sort of makes life easier if you're more powerful. Also, I haven't been going to town and we we do actually probably need to upgrade our gates in town. The nighttime enemies will start to not be total pushovers. Um, yeah, I still don't have any great, great um, runes. Oh, there's another rune. Any good? Beyond repair, yeah. A lot of the like simple runes are not too useful. The knot for speed is one where le that lets you run through the night at high speed. And that one's actually pretty handy. Um, okay, so there is one coastal area. You know what? That one I can probably just swim to. I'm going to gamble that my town is going to be fine. So if my town were to suddenly get attacked and be in a lot of trouble, I would use my waystone portion potion to get back to it instantly. So my mentality is I don't really have to worry about it because I can just get back to it so easily. This island <laughs> I literally walked onto, didn't even have to even have to swim to. So here's the first island. You got to watch out for these um, these sort of dart trap things out. I need to take my own advice. Okay, I can just heal. And here are the dudes. So these yellow health bastards are the ones you want to try and get first. Because they will like revive and power up all the other dudes. They hurt. They do a lot of damage. Have your level three potions ready. Because you get like two or three level three potions from clearing this area. If you're ever concerned about your tree, if it's taking damage, its health is in the upper right, right under day six. Just pay attention to that health bar. If it starts to decline, your tree is under attack. You can also pop a map at any point, and you can see one gate has gone down. They actually did get in, but I didn't even bother to go back, and it was fine. I did lose 200 health points, though. It went from 520 to uh, 5,000. So... I am going to have to go rebuild that gate, and I can't ignore it anymore, you know. You can kind of put off dealing with uh, your gate for as long as possible, but at a certain point you kind of have to pay attention to it. Um, okay, there is a coastal base right here, though, so I'm going to clear it so that I can find where the next beacon island is. Here's a stupid yellow health guy. I don't fully understand what the yellow health guys do, but I've seen them revive enemies. So, like, you kill an enemy and the yellow health guys will literally bring them back. They can even bring it back, bring back other yellow health guys. So, they, the yellow health guys can revive each other. It's actually a big pain in the butt, and so that's why you kind of have to kill them. There is one other strategy you can take which, with them, which is to ignore them. So, though the yellow health guys will heavily support other guys... They will technically ignore you and not attack you if you just leave them alone. So you can kill all the other guys and leave the yellow health guys. And, you know, you, you can just do that if you want, um, if you're having trouble with them. So that is one other way to get around. Um, let's see. I think this should also give me a map, too. Okay, so there's the base. Okay, so there and there we need to go. So I'm going to teleport over to there and sail my ship, my first ship. I got lucky with this island being so close, I could just jump off a cliff and get to it. Usually you're not that lucky. Do a little pit stop in town. I'm going to upgrade my gates to level 2, which will just make sure that they're, they hold while I'm away adventuring. Need some wood boards. And so upgrade. And over here totally got destroyed. I'll upgrade it. Another thing you can do to keep your town guarded while you're gone is just upgrade your dudes to level 5. Because then they do more damage to the enemies. So if your actual like adventurer guys in town are high level, it helps defend your base. Um, I need five more boards, can't afford it. 
Um, I could probably squeeze out five more by playing some games with the resources here. So I need branches. I'm going to build some branches. Got five more boards. Easy. And up you go. There we go. Level two gates. That'll keep us nice and protected. My potions are fine. Even got an invincibility soup from killing uh, Fenrir or whatever. This is the closest checkpoint that brings me to a beach that's usable for me to uh, actually sail up to the next place to go. So I'll build my boat and off we go. Now, if there was a checkpoint over here, I had bo I, I never bothered to go up here, but had I bothered, there might have been a checkpoint or something that I could have used there, but since I didn't, since I didn't uh, bother going up here, this is the closest checkpoint I had. But as you can see, it doesn't make a ton of difference. This island stuff is a bit annoying. It is going to just burn a bit of time to go to these islands. Um, also, notice my tree, 4991. It's slowly losing health. Slowly as our world cools, your tree will start to take damage. And actually, I'm going to pop back to town after I clear this, and I'm going to pump a bunch of resources into the tree. If you keep it above half health, it will sustain itself longer. Oops. Get out. Climb out. Now, this island is a bit unfortunate because it doesn't have a... Uh, a waypoint, a fast travel point. Get over here. He dropped nothing of use. Those guys are kind of annoying. Um, so you can at any point turn your money into health for the tree. So I'll dump a couple thousand into the tree just to keep it healthy. Um, you usually want your tree to be above half health. At this point in the game, your tree should probably be somewhere around like 7,000 health. Like you should have enough money that you can do that, and I easily can. Um, so here's where the sentinel shines. Just come in here. And take care of business. Keep your health potion free up in case you need to heal and use it non-sparingly don't worry about if you're going to run out of health potion threes you're going to get a couple from clearing this you can make more in the base better to stay alive got that beacon got this and like we could grab our boat and like try and sail to another island, but the last island is over here. I'm going to bet there's a beach somewhere over here that I can use. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Anyway, we fast traveled home. Let's heal our poor sick tree. And tonight, I think I will come back and try and defend the base. I wonder if we have any other quests I could do. I mean, there's really no point doing... So there, 7,400, that's pretty good. There's no point in doing any more quests at this point, but sometimes just kind of... If there's an easy one, like kill some hell things, you might as well. There we go. Werewolves, which used to be, you know, not like scary, but... Not pushovers are now total pushovers. And uh, you've got that invincibility soup too from killing the first boss. Don't be afraid to use that too. Um, those beacons are a good place to use use it. Like I could have used it when I was fighting those waves of dudes that were at, on the previous island. Um, it sort of makes it a sure thing that you'll get them. But, uh, okay, this is this is looking bad. It's looking like there's literally no beach out here. Hmm. 
That is way too far to swim. All right. Well, I've just wasted a lot of time. But I got a waystone portion, potion. So I can get back to town. So I'm going to have to take a really long sail over to that island. Might actually be worth it, too. Yeah. Like, having my boat might have been useful. Oh, well. We'll still probably clear all the bosses by, like, day 10 or 11, I'm guessing. Those guys... Yeah, you can just, like, leave a door open if you want, and it's not really going to hurt anything. Yeah. I'm going to level her up yeah. since I'm doing that. And watch, like, your NPCs will more or less, like, take care of these guys. This, this guy will help, too. No. Um, in the later days, if you are trying to, like, defend late into the game where, like, night lasts really long, you can have, like, both these doors open. And again, as a sentinel, you can just, like, stun a big group of them. Um, and you can just sort of like bounce back and forth and keep that clear. Oh, I missed. The occasional guy may get through, but you know, like. And this is with no speed boost. If you had not for speed, which allows you to go faster at night, you could be running between the gates really easily. Oh yeah, I just clear this out here. More of an inconvenience than anything. Alright, I'm gonna go close these gates. And I guess... Might as well run through the desert. It's not... Because we have to, like, sail around the continent. So to get over there, like, there, we might as well try and get to that beach right there. So let's do it. Day seven is going to be their a run through a dry desert. Now, if you were trying to like survive indefinitely into the night, you would need to build your lumber yard too. I didn't bother to build it because we really don't need it. But uh, there are achievements and stuff you can get from, um, you know, surviving to day 15. Uh, if you want that, it's pretty easy to get. Just uh, build not just your quarry, but your uh, lumber mill too, lumber yard, whatever it is. And uh, then basically you get free lumber, you get free wood. You can build not only the gates, you can build guard towers in town. Um, and you can easily defend, especially Sentinel. If I was overheating right now, I could just jump in the water, I would instantly cool off and my heat thing would be reset. So again, don't be afraid of the desert. Don't be afraid of heat. You have heal on your axe. You have these things to heal you. You have potions. You have water. And if you can find a checkpoint or a building, you'll heal up too. So, or you'll you'll cool down. So you don't have to worry about, uh, about temperature. Not as scary as it seems. Okay. Curious if there is a beach over here. There is not. All right. So we're going to go to the beach to the left. We'll have to just sail around the continent. Still picking these up in case I want a little more armor, but actually I don't think I need it, so I should stop. Another trick is if you dive off a cliff, you take damage, but if you dive off a cliff into water, you do not. So if you're ever low on health, but you want to dive off a cliff, just look for water. Look for a river. Off we go. Now tonight is another night where I have to defend my base or I could lose the game. So just pay attention to that. But the nice thing about that is it means that once tonight is over, I'm going to have two full days where I don't have to defend. So what I'm going to try and do is clear out this last camp. And then where's the gate? Down here. I'll see if I can sail to that island and unlock that checkpoint so that the level 2 boss, the second boss, is unlocked. And then if I have any time left, I'll just start to go to some of these fire camps and clear out uh, some of the fire guys to get the uh, level 3 boss that much closer to being unlocked. So yeah, we're at about an hour and 20 minutes. Probably another 20 minutes I think we'll be done, my guess. We'll see. We'll see how realistic that is. But uh, we're we're in the end game now. 
we're getting the third beacon. The second boss, as you'll see, the the one I like to do second, the um, I call him the second boss because he's a season two boss. Um, he's just a big serpent, a sea serpent, and he's pretty basic. In fact, I think he's easier than the, the wolf Fenrir. Um, and then the level three boss is like a big Satan devil guy, demon guy. Um, who, I, I think he's, he's not bad. He, I think he's a little harder than the, uh, uh, serpent. So the serpent guy here is pretty, pretty basic. Go. Oh, I got antsy. Oh, I got real antsy. Whatever. Let's do it. Come here, you yellow-faced jerks. Uh, I'll just pop the invincibility potion. Why not? Kill this guy, too. There we go. It's nice being invincible. Again, I used to play a Seer, and Seers have a lot of, like, heal and stun themselves. Ooh, a second pumped up. Actually, that is handy. Two pumped ups is good. It's no soul-powered, but it's not nothing. So let's turn off... Uh, I guess we don't need the Cedar one anymore. I think a Jotun just entered, yeah. Like, I have really not been managing my Jotuns well. I've just been killing them instantly. I could buy myself a lot more time with my Jotuns. Uh, but it kind of gives me something to do, so I don't really mind it. But yeah, if you're concerned about your Jotuns, if you don't want to spend time killing them, then it is good to not just completely destroy them every time like I do. <laughs> Don't do what I do. Be better, guys. Be best. <laughs> Wasn't that the educational slogan slogan that Melania, Melania Trump or whatever? That it's not even good English. Be best. Oh, uh, uh, let's not get into that. Let, let's not get into the, the politics here. Oh, there's a gate down here. Get out of the way. These yellow health guys on the beach are handy because they might drop a soul powered. I've seen it happen. And I got none. Oh, but I got a yellow, a golden horn. Um, I guess because I'm here, I will clear this out. So these fire guys here. So see on the left there, it's showing that my quest is getting more complete. So yeah, once you open that, that uh, gate in the Arctic areas, Clearing these out is still worthwhile because it will uh, work on that quest. Nothing. I was really hoping I'd see a soul powered um, for this little run through with you guys. They just get to listen to me talk about it endlessly. Oops. Uh, hello? There we go. Um, what's, what's happening here? Get in. Okay, so we don't have a ton of time left, so probably I'm just going to sail to this island and unlock the uh, checkpoint. That's all I'm doing. And then I will head back to town. And then I do have to kill the Jotun before we go in for the boss. So the way I've seen this game be lost is Jotun mismanagement. You forget the Jotun is there, you forget how far away they are, you don't deal with them, and then you lose the game. So, mind your Jotuns, people. When one spawns, even if you're not going to take care of it right away, it should be whatever you're currently working on, it should be the next thing that you do after you've uh, taken care of whatever you currently need to do. And even if you're not going to kill it, find it, so you know where it is, whittle it down to like 500, 600, even 1,000 health is fine, and then walk away from it and do whatever you need to do. And at some point, when it gets close to your village, or if you really let it go, if it even gets in your village, you'll get a notification on your screen. Instantly teleport back to town and do the last hit, do that last 500 damage 
um, and, uh, and and just get rid of it. Um, another reason the Sentinel is handy is you can just sort of like defend your base this way. Like I'm not even really going to the gates. I'm just sort of like getting close enough that I can see them. Shucking a shield to stun everyone. If big guys want to come in, open your gate and let them in. And then watch them die. I like opening the gate and luring enemies in rather than going outside. Because um, if you open your gate, they stop attacking it. And if you just roll off the battlements outside, then it's like you're kind of trapped outside. And it just wastes more time, so... Um, I like to be in my base, and I open up the gates to let guys in. But here's an example of what I've seen other people do. So they're like, oh, I don't want to open the gate because I would let guys in. So I will do this. I will jump outside, and I will fight them. And you can do that. Nothing wrong with it. But now, look how long it takes me to get back in my base. All right? I could be running to another gate. So again, time management is one of the keys in this game. Don't do anything that's going to slow you down. If you're trying to do all the bosses, you're just having fun, just have fun. There we go. Die. Okay. My base is fine. It's not going to get overrun at this point. I'm now going to go find that Jotun. This is another thing you can do to manage your time is don't, don't spend too much time on something you don't need to. So, we got an Ice Jotun, which is kind of handy. It's another reason why I leave the Fire Guy to the end. Because if you can get the Ice Weapon in this game, the Ice Axe, it's actually quite good in the, the Fire area of the game. So, you can see the Jotuns are starting to get beefy. If I played my cards right and managed my Jotuns better, this guy wouldn't spawn for another couple of days. Um, again... I'm a cocky bastard, and I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm not too worried about it. Also, my weapons and materials don't wear out and don't need repairs anymore, so we're going to easily take care of all any other Jotuns that spawn and whatnot. But Jotuns give you a lot of money. They give you a chance to get good, uh, good runes, so there's no harm in spawning an extra Jotun or two. It's not going to ruin your game. Unless you really are. If you're dying a lot and, you know, you're losing lots of money and things are mismanaged, then it's going to be hard to do this. But as you can see, getting this guy, still not very difficult. So I have two pumped up runes, meaning if I let my mana get to max, I do like 300 bonus damage. So it kind of encourages me not to use a special ability on my weapons anymore. But sometimes you've got to. So I could stop now and I could go do other things and wait till this guy gets to my base, but I will kill him. But if you do want to manage your Jotuns, that's what you would do basically. Um, okay, so... Um, just for the heck of it, since we can, let's go and build our ice axe which is a good you know it's a, a good weapon to take into the fire area let's see oh we need unfrozen talisman forget it you get the unfrozen talisman by uh taking out camps in the glacial area and i have not been keeping up on that it just didn't happen this run sometimes you do sometimes you don't because i haven't bothered it's not worth the time You'll do a little bit more damage, but you're going to spend way, mo way more time getting a weapon to do a little bit more damage. You might as well just go and kill the boss with a little less damage, you know? So that's that's my attitude towards it. After playing through this numerous times. Again, maybe you want to see a cool golden weapon. Go and get the axe if you want. No harm in it. Uh, we're on day nine. We just killed a Jotun. No hell things are going to spawn for two days. Probably we can just go ahead and kill both of these bosses, depending on how much damage we do to them. Stupid thing. Oops. Look at that. Well, 
So here is this guy. Um, he has a tail to the left or right. When his head goes back, he's going to attack, so kind of get away from him. But a tail will come up on the left or right. If you're on the left or right side of the screen, he will get you. He likes to spit out this acid stuff, too. Throw your super at him. Your special move. All these stupid things are there. Sometimes he will spit individual ball. Yeah, see, if I was over to the right, I would have got creamed. So kind of watch where his tail is coming out of the water. Um, and just avoid that side of the screen. I'm sure at some point we will see it here. Okay. You'll see his tail come out of the water for a couple of seconds before he actually attacks. Like, I think it just came out on the left. Nope. Not out at all yet. There it is on the right. So if I go over to the right, he'll get me. He's gonna spit now. When he kind of roars at you, he's gonna spit. You get over to his tail, you can't attack it, but it went away too fast. When he spits, just kind of dodge around, but try and keep like the middle area clear of slime balls or whatever the stuff is, venomous poison. And I have a mana potion, don't I? Yes. Yeah, just avoid the tail and attack the tail. Usually goes away too fast, though, I find. Spit again, I know it. The third one. There you go. Get all out of your system, buddy. What a dick, he spits at you. And... There's a tail. Yeah, so this is all that there is to this boss here. Pretty simple. There's one more attack he does where um, he will literally collapse. Like he tries to do an attack so big that he collapses. Um, he usually does it when he's pretty low on health, so he may do it any time now. Nope, still doesn't want to do it. The pumped ups are helping. Uh, I am doing more damage than if I didn't have them. Because he is going down a little quicker than he typically would for a Sentinel. Um, another good class is Berserker. Um, I haven't tried Berserker on these bosses yet. But again, the Berserker and the, the Warrior would take down bosses faster than the Sentinel. But it's the price you pay. In the spit. Oh, and now, oh, I had to run through a slime field, but it was worth it because you do not want to get caught by the tail. The tail does sting quite a bit. So I've been dodging most of his attacks. His attacks do actually hurt quite a bit. Okay, here comes the big attack, I think. Yeah, you can see I took damage even though I was really far from that. If you can time the roll, you can avoid the damage, but otherwise just don't not be at full health when that big attack is coming. Oh god. So low. About to go down. Got you this time, slime ball. There we go. Alright. Two bosses down. Yeah, we could probably uh, I don't know if we'll get him before day ten or eleven, but one of those two. Oh, sh <laughs> well, there go. <laughs> Let's play this on hard. I didn't mean to use the invincibility potion I just picked up, but I did. But you know what? You don't need it. It's a crutch. Invincibility. Such a crutch. Good for emergencies, I find, but truthfully, it's like I just don't really. Um, notice your gates will repair themselves. That only happens if your tree is above half health, so don't. That's another reason not to let it fall below half health. Um. But well, let's craft. Okay, I have level two and level three heal potions. All I really need. Okay, the Fire Island, last part of the game. Um, follow the path. This uh, gray, you can see it on the map, it's sort of like a, a grayer part. It sort of looks like a molten rock here, like this that I'm on right now. This is the path. Follow the path. You'll move faster, you'll find the gates you need to go. 
Um, you can mine this stuff here, this pyre stone, if you want to get some fi some cool fire weapons and armor. Again, not necessary. By the time you're coming to the fire island, uh, the permafrost, the like ultimate winter or whatever, whatever they call it in this game, is setting in. So I have two pieces of fire armor. I'll well, mind you guys. I have two pieces of fire armor. 21 and 13. That's all. I think one piece is purple and one is blue. I got all the materials for that from picking up a few obsidians and garnets in the desert and from clearing out those uh, fire camps on the mainland. That's all. That's all you need. Um, don't spend any more time. Uh, you need to with that stuff. And honestly, armor doesn't really do too much in this game. It does soften the blow of some enemies, but uh, as you can see, like I've had no problem maintaining my health. Usually it's temperature effects that are going to kill you. Um, I followed the path all the way to the end there, and it was kind of a dead end, so fortunately, i got to go all the way to the other end. You know, we've had, it's not like we've had nothing but bad luck on this game, but, you know, when we started out, we wasted a whole half day just getting ourselves in order. You know, I'm wasting a lot of time right now. Um, I ran the wrong way on an island after running all the way back across the island. Like, I'm wasting time, but it is still what day nine and we're probably not that far off from clearing the last boss so you could do this much faster if you get lucky you get the right combination of luck and island placements and uh things like that uh i could see doing all three bosses in like six days if you got real lucky it's tight it's tough but it's doable took some damage just gonna pop the heal on my axe I prefer the axe heal when it's not crucial because potions heal you instantly, whereas the axe it heals you over time. So this gate here, um, it only opened after I killed uh, 30 fire enemies. And now there's going to be a second layer of gates. Look at this chaos here. Oh my god. It doesn't end. Okay, now I'm going to do a potion because um, I want to do an instant heal. Jeez, that was chaos. It's still happening. When you're not, when you don't need to heal instantly, don't waste your potions. Just use the heal on your axe. Another reason why I think this is an end game axe really is, you know, one of the best uh, weapons in the game. It just has so much utility. Oh, that's the tower. Avoid the towers. There's archer towers here. They really are just a pain more than anything. So I'm looking for five of those uh, fire dragons. Uh, and you'll see them when we see another one. They're just gonna be around on the island here in the, the sort of second, so there's one. There's two versions of these guys. There's like the strong and the weak. This is the strong version. Um, as a sentinel, if little guys start to congregate around a tough guy I'm fighting, I throw my shield. Doesn't matter who you hit, the shield bounces around because all the little guys. You can even stun the big guy. I mean, it doesn't stun them, but you can throw your shield at them for fun. Okay, so I've killed two of those guys. I need to find three more. There's another one. Hit, hit, roll. You can get about three or four attacks in, but don't get greedy. And these guys will do a big spin. If you had the ice axe, these guys would just melt that much faster. But, you know, again... The amount of time it would take to get the ice axe, it's not worth it. If you've gotten it along the way, it is worth it. So you might want to clear out some ice camps as you are moving through the world. But to go out of your way to find an ice camp and clear it out... Um, I mean, it's not like it's that much not worth it. It really would only take maybe like a minute or two, but... You know, it's just that much more time. I think we're now at the 20 minute mark. I think I, I said before, I thought maybe we'd clear both bosses in 20 minutes. Doesn't look like it because we cannot find a few more of those. Mass Pelorum, what they're called. Oh, there's one. Okay, this is a terrible position to be in, but this guy seems to be stunned, so. Good. And leave that archer tower and get the hell out of there. 
need one more. One more, one more. There he is. So yeah, they respawn. You can just sort of run around the area and like, they will sort of respawn in uh, in the, the, the area. I don't know what I'm trying to say. They will respawn basically. Go, all right. Third gate, the gates are represented as orange ramps on your map. map. So not this ramp we just ran up, this one over here. So we are now at the final ramp. I am going to unlock this checkpoint just so we have it, but truthfully, we're probably just going to clear the final boss over the night. Oh, you dick. Guy knocked me out of uh, unlocking this. What a jerk. Uh, the Sentinel also heals constantly over time, so that's another reason why I'm usually not too worried about my health. Um, the other thing is, at this point, if I died, I would lose 75% of my souls, but that's about it. And it doesn't really matter. Okay, heal doesn't really matter at this point. Send those guys, avoid those fireballs. So these guys like to spawn other dudes. Avoid the exploding fireballs if you can. Throw your shield a lot. And just focus on getting these guys down. Pop a heal. Tank your way through it. And you'll be fine. Alright guys. Let's settle down. Block attacks. Remember blocking attacks? We did that a lot more when we were uh, a younger adventurer. Yeah, I feel like when you get later in this game, you become so powerful that you don't need to worry about blocking so many attacks, but don't get lazy. Don't get complacent. Um, now, we only have three heal potions for this guy, so if I get sloppy, I guess I'll have to go back to town, but I have a waystone por potion. I just pulled up this, by the way. That's what that flicker was. Anyway. Okay, you can usually just keep attacking this guy when he sort of does his uh, summoning fire attack. So I just sort of fought through that. Get out of the way of that. <laughs> so yeah, I am taking damage very sloppily here. We'll see if I need to pop a potion. I'm gonna keep using my heals. Um, you can avoid those fire beam attacks that he summons from the ground there. If you're playing around the middle like I am, just watch when he brings his two hands up. Like, go with the attack button as soon as possible. Like, right now, and roll out of the way. If you get caught in those hands, you won't necessarily die, but you'll have to pop a full heal potion. Just live through it. Because you can't... You get stuck under there. Um, so I like to alternate back and forth between his chest and one of his hands. I've seen people go between hand, hand, hand and hand. Uh, but... Um, I just feel like... Whoa! Almost got caught in there. I don't know, my strategy's a little riskier, I guess. If you're not comfortable, don't do this. You can just go between his two hands. And his attacks are fairly telegraphed. The only really thing to watch out for is he summons those little fire guys. You see one walking around by his right hand. It's in the lava pit now. Coming to get me. Um, just make sure to get those guys. Like, I can't avoid these attacks. I'm just being lazy. There you go, I avoided it. Um, as you can see, he's already, like, less than half health. He's probably going to die in the night. Um, so this totem here... Oh, and by the way, like, don't don't worry about the fire. No. Oh, God. Um, you can run through this lava. It's not really going to kill you. Um, but he summons totems in the fire pits. You do have to kill those totems. If you do not, they will hit you with... Um, uh, homing rockets that do a lot of damage. So if you're gonna die, it's, I'm gonna pop a heal. If you're gonna die, it's usually due to that. So like, there's one right now. I'm gonna kill it real quick. And I'm gonna avoid that attack. Let's dance, buddy. So yeah, I think I'll probably... Oh, there's another one. Oh, see, it's launching rockets. The rockets are shown by the white circles where they're going to land. Yeah, just avoid them. Um, I'll keep fighting this guy through the night. I'll do another heal because he's almost dead. So. Wow, 
watch out for that attack. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm playing sloppily. He's getting me. But I'm still pretty safe. As you guys can see, so... Don't be afraid of this guy. Ain't got nothing on ya. Oh, and get out of the way of that. But he's pretty much dead here. And he's dead. Alright, so that was a day 10. We got them all. You can actually die in this if you go in it, so you have to wait for it. It's annoying. The boss is dead, but his attack is still there. To wait for it to despawn. So we had a couple of pumped ups. So we were doing an extra, I think, 250, because 125 per pumped up. We never got, never got my beloved, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, soul powered. Um, but if you get a golden egg, equip it before you leave the world, because it will give you a couple extra golden horns when you quit. Um, at this point, day 10, you can quit, you can keep going. If you want to get maximum Jotun rewards, you can keep going till you kill a couple more Jotuns. You can go into the Endless Night. My gates are still standing up pretty well. I mean, they might have fallen tonight. Um, but I don't think there would have been enough guys to destroy my tree. Not at 7,000 health. And my own dudes would have fought them off. The NPCs would have fought them off a bit. But anyway, let's end our ultimate playthrough. So that was about an hour 45. Although, truthfully, like we did spend like 10 or 15 minutes at the beginning before we even started. So total time for the video is like an hour 45, but we did that faster. So yeah, there you have it. Killing three bosses in Tribes of Midgard. Also Tribes of Midgard. Dudes for my regular watchers. Um, it was kind of fun to play a game I really, really knew really well. Um, instead of, you know, on my channel, we normally just try all sorts of different games. And sometimes I play games I know really well, but I feel like this is like a modern one. People are still playing and it's rare that I can actually provide some kind of walkthrough. So I don't know if you enjoyed this, even if you don't play Tribes of Midgard, let me know. If you do play Tribes of Midgard, this was helpful to you, uh, as I hope it was, then, uh, you know, good luck uh, getting your own three ancient kills. They're called ancients, I guess, not bosses, but there you go. And we even earned a record 24 horns. Huzzah! Um, guys, I hope you had fun today. If you did, don't forget to like the video, share it, comment, do all the regular stuff. And other than that, now you know what game has been addicting me in my off uh, screen time recently. It's been, uh, been Tribes of Midgard. So yeah, I'm going to go play some more. And uh, you guys take care of yourselves. We'll be back soon with more retro games on my channel, though. But... Uh, until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves. Peace!